Hi guys this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music in this lesson which we've titled the five pillars of piano accompaniment for pretty much any genre we are going to look at well five pillars five strategies five approaches towards accompaniment and at the top level you can make these decisions and say this is the way i want to tackle my song whichever chord progression whichever genre whichever scale whichever key i don't care this is going to combat any of these scenarios now all of these techniques which i'm going to share with you are things which i've observed and tackled over the years of playing many situations be it with a singer be it in a studio with a producer or a movie director any such scenario and i found that this these five strategies tend to come out instinctively and then i shape it as per the situation as per the song so you have the core ready or the pillar as i like to call it and then you weave around that okay so let's get cracking before we do this lesson is supplemented with my handwritten notes with staff notation and midi tracks it's waiting for you on our patreon page for just five dollars a month and that five dollars doesn't just give you this video it gives you every single lesson which we have ever done and which we probably ever will do as long as patreon exists i guess and there's a subscribe button on our youtube channel as you probably already know it's just a click away do consider that so let's first look at the chord progression there are four chords and just to make it simple i'm also going to show you the chords with their respective inversions first chord is c minor played as g c e flat in this order i like this way of playing c minor and in the bass you play c its root the second chord would be f minor over a flat that's a flat c f slightly tricky so you may want to angle your thumb slightly in order to play that with an a flat bass it gives it a lot of depth and a lot of emotion so c minor f minor with an a flat bass not f minor with an f bass it's f minor with an a flat bass and the third chord is e flat major in its first inversion g b flat e flat with a b flat in the bass and the last chord is something i love is g 7th it's a nice voicing as well which you should definitely do which is f b d there's no root in the right hand the roots in the left hand f b d the whole story again c minor f minor over a flat e flat over b flat g 7th over g bass let's repeat that and the challenge here is or i'm making it challenging for this lesson is let's play each of the chords not for the whole bar let's not do 1 2 3 4 like this let's challenge ourselves by playing it within a bar so two chords in one bar will be c minor f minor e flat and G seven. Let's do that again. C minor, F minor over A flat, E flat over B flat, G seventh. So it's shifting every two beats. Of course, I'm playing it on every beat, so it's two hits if you look at it. C minor, F minor over A flat, E flat over B flat, G seventh, and repeat. beat So the first strategy I have for you is what what we call ballad chords with a time feel. So ballad chords with a time feel will take the chord and in the right hand which tends to be the more busier hand you just follow the pulse until the chord changes and with the left hand you start off by just slamming a nice huge octave. Don't do sounds a bit smaller so nice and big c okay that's g c e flat 
okay and now i'm going to do two hits for each chord and one hit with the root this is the standard ballad style which we use in most of our songs you're getting the vibe now to add motion to this you just tell yourself how much is the beat getting divided by if the beat is getting divided into two units you're going to count quavers right 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and if the beat is getting divided into three units you're going to count triplets 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and like that if the beat is getting into divided into four units you're going to count semi quavers 1e and 2e and 3e and 4e and or tak dimi tak junu tak dimi tak junu dividing by 3 could be considered as tak it tak it tak it tak it dividing by 2 you could say tak 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 so determine your time feel which is the rate or the amount of beat division and also it may be swinging so instead of it going 1e and 2e and which is rather straight it could be 1e and 2e and 3e and 4e and it could swing so basically swing would be your adjusting the e's and the ers if it's 16 note swing or 8 note swing is where you're adjusting just the and so that will be 1 and 2 and 3 and four as opposed to one and two which sounds more straight straight music is where you tend to move straight you move forward and swing music is where you tend to sway you know like in a sideways motion at least that's what tends to happen to me you might know better i'm not the world's greatest dancer so if you dance you will know what happens to you when you swing when you dance to swing music versus to straight music you have different dance routines different dance genres i would imagine for each time feel of music so how do we execute this on the keyboard if you take our chord let's take one chord c minor let's say i want to do simple eighth notes a great way to do this is split up your left hand octave and very quietly at those in between off beats repeat the octave so you're slamming it down together one and two and and you're hitting all the ands rather quietly One and two and three, basically all the ands gives the song a lot of motion, a lot of dynamics as well because the volume of these are almost ghost-like in nature. I can swing this now, and where's the swing coming from? It's just my thumb of the left hand. and for a ballad feel we try to use our pedal as much as possible it gives a more ambient sound a very epic open sound now what happens if you're dividing by 3 your vibe will be 1 and 2 and tak it tak it tak it so i could now use both my thumbs break up the chord slightly you know tan tak it 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 i get a automatic automatic triplet feel as opposed to quavers or eighth notes right if i want to go very busy maybe 16th notes let's try that one e and uh, between my thumbs they are having a kind of a tussle together very busy sounding you can also kind of you don't have to do 
You don't have to only do notes between the C and the G thumbs. You can do. You can even add this G if it sounds good to you. But I would recommend just start with the two thumbs. because the bass notes are differing in this exercise at least they are not the true roots of the chords right so if you swing that depending on the how much ever swing you want more forceful all down to what your thumbs are doing so this thumb technique is really good i've done this thumb technique in great detail we we'll leave a link in the description learn that lesson right after this one if you have the time or whenever so moving forward this is about the ballad ecosystem so any song you want to play this technique will really work so start with pulse hits in the right hand the roots of the chord in the left hand super easy you just need to write it down write the respective inversion as i have written in my charts for this exercise and then to add additional dynamics additional rhythmic flavor you add a ghost note with your thumb this is what works really well for me and a lot of other artists who play ballads so moving on to the next technique who can forget those arpeggios so three basic arpeggios i'm going to talk about now with speed variations so with speed variations you just want to kind of decide whether again the time feel whether you're dividing by 2 1 and 2 and a shaker is pretty helpful 1 and 2 3 and 4 or a triplet shaker tak it tak it tak it tak it see if the beats are dividing by 3 or 1 and 2 or an a semi quaver 16th note arpeggio so this is a very important decision so using the help of a shaker you can figure out your arpeggio pattern now coming back to the chords the three arpeggio patterns which are very very important for you to learn would be let's do uh, explain with just one chord so c minor g c e flat the first arpeggio pattern is low note middle note high note middle note what we call as lm hm in music lm hm lm hm okay okay and then the next pattern would be high middle low middle high middle low middle also called as high middle low middle h m l m h m you're starting from the top note and then you can even consider high low middle low which is kind of my favorite high low middle low every piano player will kind of have a preference while accompanying high low middle low and it's also important to note that again if the arpeggio has a more um, sustained ballad like vibe if it's used in a rock song or a power ballad you'd want to hold down your pedal as you play the chord and another nice strategy would be if you're not holding the pedal at least hold down the top note or the first note as part of the arpeggio so if it's l m h m see i'm holding down my l or if i do high middle low middle if i do high low middle low see i'm holding on that high note so it becomes a nice habit to have it also strengthens your finger independence so now these arpeggios you can do with with basic speed variations for example if you feel the song requires eighth notes play all of your chords with eighth note arpeggios keeping that lm hm or uh, hmlm hlml whichever arpeggio pattern you prefer to and and decide move your head and see if you're dividing the head by two units or by four units one it looks like in this case i'm dividing by two so we are playing quaver arpeggios or eighth note arpeggios let's do it over the chords
you'll find the notation where you can practice along maybe later on as well over the week also allows your left hand to be a lot more independent if you want to maybe follow the drummer you can do a lot of this stuff or if you just want your own independent pattern in the left hand you can make it very epic in the left hand and keep it very static in the right hand very tight build up heavy at the end with some triplets in there got a bit carried away but now you can see the usage even of uh, 16th note variations if you feel the beat is dividing by 4 quite like this splitting my octave also to just give a nice kick and snare kind of interaction or a low and a high highlighting some accents okay and what who we don't want to forget triplet arpeggios as well so if your songs on triplets Maybe you can do L M H L M H L M H L M H L M, or start from the high note, high, middle, low. Maybe change a bit later. I'm reminded of an awesome Toto song called Child's Anthem. we we'll probably do this tutorial we have to do this tutorial I'm definitely going to do it if you like if you want me to do a tutorial of toto's child's anthem leave it in the comments so moving forward let's look at another approach towards piano accompaniment so if you take any kind of a hand drum like a tabla or a bongo or a djembe or a darbuka you'll find that the high frequencies and the low frequencies don't collide with each other so if you take the bongo which is a good example This is your low sound. That's your high. Some people prefer to flip it around. I like this system because it's more piano-like in nature. So, this is your low, and that's your high. So you can create grooves. Let's say this one, which is pretty much like a person marching, left, right, left, right. But it creates some interesting rhythmic color. because your low frequency and your high frequency in this case the kick and the snare of the bongo they are having a chat with each other whenever two people have a chat you don't want um, you don't want two people to talk together you want one person to speak and then the next person speaks zakir hussain the great tabla player has a nicer way of looking at it where he says the male person is the lower drum and the female person is the higher drum and they chat with each other sort of like a relationship between a husband and a wife or something so uh, <clears throat> everyone has their different analogies that as rhythm players but the fact remains if you want to make a rhythm which works don't collide the low frequencies and the high frequencies rather use them both to chat with each other and help each other out so using that concept i can start with a march left right left right and maybe graduate to two lefts and one right left left right left left right feels a bit like we will rock you don't you think and you can make some co combinations like left right right left you should see what works with your song so na 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 you can also listen to your drummer and just you know using a drum like this a frame drum a simple affordable drum or even a table or a book or your your own body you could kind of do the low frequency here and 
the high frequency on your leg or something like that you can figure out the rhythm pattern which is going to work for you and then you just decide okay this is the low one that's going to be my bass and this is the high one that's going to end up being my chord so if i do a march there we go so i'm literally marching on the piano to prove it left right 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 left and so on now another nice way to march is to march it more rhythmically well and do a legato in the left hand and do a staccato in the right hand check that out it's still left right so if your song is a bit more on the jumpy side or if you have a drummer in your band or if you have a percussionist you could probably adopt this sort of technique and then like i said these are five pillars so to, the marching concept is a pillar you can then make it adapt to different scenarios off the top if you're doing this over a 3 by 4 or a waltz song what do you do just add one extra on the right hand becomes waltz also say things like pa pa um pa pa um pa pa which helps you count it better pretty much any groove we will rock you very rock like almost any rock song you could play like this or maybe do ta do do ta do your bandmate could communicate an idea to you you could just ask them to sing the groove or just tap it they could hit tap hit you if they want uh, which i don't recommend but some of them do especially drummers i've had a drummer friend who who gets angry with me and he the grooves with his sticks on my shoulder uh, which is not recommended so what you want to do is find the groove of the song and then play the piano you don't want to play the piano and then think later so the bongo will be a great friend of yours or a frame drum or a tabla or any instrument where you can have two different pitches moving on so let's say you want to define your piano accompaniment arrangement in a more dancey way you want to say you know this is a dance song i want to make people dance it's 2023 that's all they care about these days or seem to care about these days so what do i do pull out the big guns This is called the thresio rhythm. Now, the thing about the thresio is because one of the hits, namely one and two and three and four and one and two, one and two, is on the off beat. It creates that rhythmic interest and just gets people to be a bit excited and thus dance. One and two and three and four and one and two. and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 so this is a nice dance rhythm which you could try out it's called the thresio and what happens is if you speed this up 1 and 2 and 3 it you start counting it as 16th notes and then when you feel even more and and ease and urs against the pulse people will dance more i presume so 1 and 2 and 3 So let's do that over the chord progression. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three. Na 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 na
kind of sounds very Latin, very salsa. You could imagine it in those contexts. Practice this or construct an accompaniment in two ways. This the first way is like what we talked about earlier in the syncopated style with one by one. Boom, pa, pa, um. Left, right, right. The other opportunity you have. it will be to cre- to keep the pulse running as your listener is probably going to do this or move their body to the pulse and then in your right hand you offload the entire hits to the right hand with the chord so let's do it slowly in eighths 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 2 and 3 and i'm hitting for the purpose of a better groove 3 1 and 2 and 3 and i'm playing i'm not hitting the bass at every every beat i think it's nice even this way but this makes them dance more and it will also motivate you to count in 16s rather than in eights so one e and that and a count you can literally feel those off beats as they are kind of giving you a little bit of a electric electric jolt so to speak one e and a and one e and a which you have to feel within your body if you want to feel if you want them to feel your music and dance and groove you need to do it yourself so whenever there's an and or a, a off beat try to make sure that you you are also feeling that intensity or that that that, that energy of the ands otherwise it's not going to convey to the the audience yeah a two and a three and so keep the pulse in the left hand and the groove in the right hand you can also keep the you can kind of uh, dis- you can kind of uh, divide your responsibility by playing c chord a flat chord b flat so that's the most syncopated approach while the grooving approach the drum like approach if you will would be keep the pulse in your left hand and move the entire pattern to the right hand so there's a very good dance rhythm which you could check out and you could learn more about it in our in the description we leave a link to the thresio and a few exercises on using the thresio and salsa rhythms in general which i love to perform and compose with okay so i have one more pillar of piano accompaniment for pretty much any genre which needs the drums so you need to listen to the drums follow the drums and then see what you can do in a nutshell what's going to end up happening is <clears throat> the drums the most important parts of the drums are kick snare pretty much all the time so you'll have your du tha kick snare and then to support that and to give the audience a feel of the pulse and the division system of the beat we have the hi hats or we might have the ride which is a more ringing kind of symbol which is used at the choruses of songs pretty much or the the outros or where the songs get very heavy you might want to use the ride so you balance your intensity but keep the same hits with the hi hat and the ride so a good way to practice the drums would be let's say you take a simple groove like we will rock you the we will rock you groove would be dup dup ta dup dup ta kick kick snare kick kick snare right so you could perform the kick kick snare with your left hand with the lower range instrument uh, lower range of your piano and do kick on the lowest note on the root and then divide your root and octave and play the octave at the top and that gives you the feeling that it's the snare drum even though it's not dum dum ta and this is what a bass player in a band would also do in an ensemble so it's pretty much universal and the piano is also a bass instrument like any other so you go so this doesn't have to be we will rock you but it could be we will rock you now in the right hand you could start with imagining what the hi hat of the drummer would do so if it's play that and if you feel it's too forceful then arpeggiate that you don't have to go blocks you can go 
आपे चाहिए दैट और मे बी यू फील द हैट्स आर गोइंग स्लो blocks would work for this let's do that with the changes let's look at now the hats doubling probably you could look at this as eighth note high hats you could even develop some hi hat accents for example an uh, open hi hat could be Imagining the drummer lifting the hat with his leg and creating an open feel. There we go. Piano is very similar to drumming if you think about it. It's just that the output is remarkably different. Okay, if you like arpeggios. There we go. What I'm going to do now is to try and make it as real world as possible, and we are not going to change the chords. It's still going to be C minor, F minor over A flat, E flat over B flat, and G7. And if you're following the hats, and if you want to do a faster hi hat performance, even though the hi hat is not doing it uh, himself or herself, you can consider you play the faster hats. Maybe you want to do this. drummer is not doing that but you could do that as well at least you're following the kick and snare which are very important and when you follow the kick and snare you don't have to follow every aspect of it you can just follow the ones which you think matter the most in the song it it doesn't have to be the ghost notes of the snare or the extra kicks you know and so on and so forth right so let's start with this groove doop doop now the first thing you need to do is observe it from a kick and snare perspective dup dup ta dup dup ta dup dup ta there are also these little snare ghost tum ta ta dup dup there's also hats looks like it's an eighth note hat sequence and this is a damn good drummer so the drummer is going to do some ghost notes like you dup ta ka dup dup ta ka dup dup ta ka dup dup ta you see these random snares so you could follow those Your drummer will appreciate it, I'm sure. Dup dup tat, dup dup tat, dup dup tat, dup dup tat, dup dup. Yo, you may not catch those, but this feels a bit like we will rock you, at least to start. So, uh, one way to start is do the kick and snare in your left hand and right hand. just to be aligned with the song and the tempo of your drummer you could add those ghost notes with your thumb by breaking up the chord let's say if you want to play the kick and snare in your left hand i miss the g Let me try that again. There we go. I think. Basically, trying to copy the kicks and the snares with my pinky and my thumb. to get the hats in my right hand or maybe i can just do just exactly with the hats Let's bring back the kick so even if you don't match the drums exactly it should at least give you a perspective it should give you a good and it, 
at least you won't get kicked out of the band right guys hope you're going to find the five pillars of piano accompaniment useful for you hopefully it will help you to survive or play any musical genre accompany a singer who could be a, another individual a friend who you're jamming with or yourself you could be the singer and the idea here is to have an instinct whenever a melody is thrown at you a new song is thrown at you some environment some jam or recording uh, studio environment you should test out these five strategies and see what your fellow bandmates or your choir or your fellow musicians in general would like thanks a ton for watching the video don't forget to get your notes on patreon it's just for five dollars for my handwritten notes as well as the staff notation and if you want to dive into these concepts of piano accompaniment hand independence arpeggio playing in a lot more structured a manner you can always consider heading over to nathanielschool.com and you can do one of the two things you have video courses where i've pre-recorded a bunch of lessons in a structured manner or else you could consider learning with one of our faculty i am also one of the faculty in person by just filling up a form the moment you fill up the form our course advisor will reach you and don't forget to hit that subscribe thanks a ton for watching the video cheers catch you in the next one